It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome to today's video. I know that I've talked a lot about starting up your own home baking business and giving you lots of tips already on what to do. If you want to check out any of those videos, go ahead and click in the right hand corner. But I haven't really talked about what to do when you're beginning beginning. And I literally mean haven't had any clients whatsoever. And I was really inspired to make this video by a subscriber's comment. They had asked what to do when people want to see more of your work. And that's a great question because what if you don't have any work to show, but you're more than capable. So I'm going to talk to you today about five things that you need to do in order to start your home baking business and make it successful. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to address that subscriber's question. What do you do when you don't really have a large portfolio? Most customers are going to come to you and they're going to say, Hey, can I see some more work? Or, Have you ever done this type of cake before? I would love to see a picture of it. Now, most people are not cake decorators or cookie decorators or pastry artists. So all they can really go on is your past pictures. But when you're first starting out, chances are you're not going to have a whole portfolio of pictures. So what do you need to do? You need to work for free. That's right, my friends. When you're first starting out, you need to give away your product for free and try out lots of different things. Now, make sure that you're not just giving away your product to random strangers. It needs to be people that you can trust, like friends and family. If you start giving it out to random strangers, then word of mouth is going to travel, that you're doing things for absolutely no money at all, and then all of a sudden your customer base is based on people that just want free cakes and cookies. So I would suggest that you make anything that your friends and family request that is going to help expand your portfolio. And I would make sure that you give it to people that are really gonna give you an honest critique of your work from taste to your actual decorating skills. And try not to take that critique personally. I don't know if you guys saw my video where I went up against a Food Network champion and we battled it out in the 30 minute cake challenge, but my husband is a huge supporter of me and he literally gave me zero out of five on a whole score component. This one, this one wins. This is five, that one you lose. So that's the kind of honest opinion that I like and it has actually really helped me throughout the years because that type of critique is exactly what I needed in order to make things better and to continue to make things better. Giving away your work for free is a great way to build up that portfolio. It's also a way for you to build up your portfolio full of things that you actually want to make. That way people are going to gravitate towards you. A lot of cake artists I know have a very specific style or very specific things that they do. Most cake or pastry artists try to stick to a particular thing that they do. And I have to tell you that even though people will take on many different types of projects, it's always really clear what their strengths are. Some are really great at florals. Some are really awesome at characters. Some are really good at structures. This is your time to figure out what are you really good at? What do you want your customer base to want from you? Also, doing things for free means that you have that ability to make mistakes without any consequences whatsoever. Learning to take really, really good photos. This is actually one of the most important things you need to do when you are starting up your company. I'm assuming if you are thinking about starting your own cake or cookie company that you already have some of those skills in the bag and that somebody out there has told you that you should start your at-home bakery. So I'm pretty confident that your skills are there. They just need to be maybe honed in more or maybe just a little bit more refined. But it really doesn't matter how good your skills are if you can't take a picture. I have seen so many cakes in my time on social media, especially on Instagram and Pinterest. And I gotta tell you, a lot of the pictures that I see blowing up are not that impressive. Of course, there are amazing artists out there whose work is really impressive and they have good photography to match it. But I've seen really simplistic things like rosette cakes or drip cakes that are going viral just for the simple fact that the photography is really crisp and clean. But if I'm actually looking at it from a technical standpoint, there's really not much to it. So taking a photo that looks professional is super important. 
As a client, when I am opening up your portfolio of work, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for one, a lot of content, which we just covered in point one, and two, I am looking for quality. I don't wanna see a blurry photo that you hurriedly took when you were at a wedding delivering a wedding cake. I wanna see something with a nice background or a clean background, and I want to see your product front and center. Some tips on how to take a photo. So I am by no means an excellent photographer, but I have had people comment that they really do like the photos that I take. I know I could do even better. So I'm going to give you tips based both on what I personally do and the type of pictures that I am attracted to. So I really love my kitchen background, so I'm really lucky in that sense that my kitchen has a lot of natural lighting. That's the first thing that you want to make sure that you have natural lighting. Don't ever try to take a picture in a dark room or even a room that's lit by artificial lighting because it'll never look that good. And I also never make sure to take pictures at night because taking pictures at night just gives it a grainy feel. And even in my own videos, when I have filmed at night or I've taken photos at night, I really just don't like looking at those videos or pictures. Sometimes you are forced into that situation. Sometimes I'm forced into filming at night and therefore don't get as nice of lighting. That's just the way it is. But you want to try for the most part to take a beautiful photo in natural lighting. So that's step one. Step two is making sure that you have a nice background. So like I said before, my kitchen for myself, I really like that background. It looks kind of natural. You can see that I've made it in a kitchen, but my kitchen is very white and it's very bright. So it offers a lot of light and a lot of good things. However, when I lived at my other house, it wasn't very bright in there. I didn't really like the background that much. Things were dark. So if I had to only take pictures in that house again, what I would most likely do is I would buy some sort of background. Now, there are a lot of apps where you can edit things down and change that background, and it's probably cheaper in the long run than buying your own background. But I think buying a selection of backgrounds that you can just put up and then you put your product in front of it looks really, really professional. And I know a lot of professional cake artists use that type of thing. Or if you don't want to do that, try and find a blank wall in your house where the natural sunlight is going to hit it. The last thing I do to really make sure that my photos look nice and they look uniform is I always try to make sure to have the background blurred and your product in focus. That's one thing I noticed that when I started using my portrait mode on my iPhone, that it really changed the quality of my photos. And honestly, it really changes how luxurious your product looks. I never use filters and there's a really good reason for that. I'll use filters on fun things like Instagram stories because that doesn't really matter and it goes away, but I try not to use any filters on my actual photos because I really want to show what my natural work is. If I put too many filters on things and I change things a lot, then that means the person when they receive my product is maybe thinking that my colors are more vibrant than they are or there's more contrast in them. So I don't like things to be too different. It's kind of like online dating. You do wanna make sure that you put your best foot forward, but you don't want your customer to be completely shocked when what they received is completely different than what you're giving them. Now, if you've worked in customer service before, then chances are you've probably got this one in the bag. If you're very charismatic and you're very warm and kind, they're gonna want to buy from you regardless if they think you are the absolute best cake or cookie decorator. You don't really need to upsell your customers. Everything is just very much you're listening to their specifications and you're giving them guidance. And that's pretty much it. But here are the things that I really try to do. Be super, super specific. And I've said this before in past videos and I'm going to say it again, because when you are first starting out, it's easy to just kind of get wrapped up in the fact that you're excited that someone is purchasing something from you. And when they say, I want a unicorn cake, that seems so easy. And in your head, you already have a picture of the unicorn cake that you're thinking of, but it could be something totally different. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you are super, super specific. The next thing is you want to be very direct. So when you're starting out, people sometimes will take advantage of that fact. 
especially being honest and upfront saying, maybe you haven't done a whole lot of cakes, that's why your prices are a little bit lower. And then this can sometimes lend to people wanting to haggle with you and bring your prices down further. So it is really hard when you're starting out because you might feel a little bit insecure about your work or you might just feel like I really want to have this order. So I'm going to bring it down even further. But don't. If you've watched my cake pricing video before, obviously you're not going to start with those prices right off the bat. You're going to make those a lot lower. So because you're already giving a lower price on your cakes, there is no need to lower it further. Being really direct about it and just accepting graciously if they don't want to pay that price. But chances are you're probably one of the cheaper businesses around, so they are going to come to you. And if not, oh well. And finally, being genuinely kind and warm about it. Things that turn me off when I am going to a business is when people are overly interested or when they're acting like I'm just a dime a dozen. So it's really kind of a little balance that you have to reach. You have to be open and genuine and give genuine advice. One of the things that often happens to me is people come to me and say they want a slab cake. People that come to me, they want like a Costco sized slab cake. And I'm very upfront and honest with them about that. And I say, hey, you know, if you want a slab cake, Costco is probably the better option because I'm gonna be charging you about $250 for this slab cake. But if you want something beautiful that can feed a lot of people, then I would suggest this instead. So right there in that scenario, what I'm trying to show you is that you need to have your honest opinion in there but you're still a business person, so you can still try to offer a different experience or offer them something different than what they had expected when they came in. Chances are people are really going to love that you genuinely gave your opinion and that you're not just trying to make a dollar from them, that you actually care about their cake and about what their event is. is more about how to successfully start your business without breaking the bank. So you really have to work with what you've got. And I know in previous videos, I've talked about must have items and things that I really like to use and things that you shouldn't waste your money on. But you also need to work with what you have in the beginning. So of course, you're gonna need something like a spatula, a KitchenAid mixer. These are things that yes, you should have but don't go out buying all these fancy tools and things that yes, will make your life easier, but will be a huge investment right off the bat before you even made money. So a little rule of thumb that I stuck to was I always only spent 50% of whatever it is that I made. So let's say I made a cake for $100, but it cost me about $30 to make the cake. So that's $70 profit. And so I would make sure that I'm only going to spend $35 on any new material. And of course, if you're making several cakes or several orders at once, then that's going to add up and you can really invest in your business. But I think by making sure that you're only spending 50% of your profits, it's really going to keep your business staying afloat. Now, this isn't as large scale of a business as if you were to own a commercial bakery, but you never want your profits to dip below zero. And the final thing, all of these cakes you should master if you are looking to open up your own home-based bakery business. Rosette cake, drip cake, covering a cake with fondant smoothly, and coating your cake in buttercream or ganache smoothly. Oh, and of course, I can't forget character cakes. So, the reason that I say all of these cakes is because I have been in this business for a while and I know what people are going to order. I cannot tell you how many rosette cakes I have made. And even though on Instagram, I see them all the time, I am so tired of rosette cakes, people still keep ordering them because it's something that's cheap but looks beautiful and impressive. I can now make a rosette cake in about 10 minutes. It really doesn't take you that long, but it's one of those things that's going to help you make money and quickly because you can do it so quickly. 
I cannot tell you the number of times I've received so many compliments on something so easy. And the reason I think people love these cakes is because they're so neat and tidy and they're so versatile. So it's really important to nail these things, even though I feel like the time has passed on these cakes and we're trending towards things that are different. But for some reason, I still see people ordering these. So I think it's really important in 2020 to nail those cakes. I do want to talk a little bit more about character cakes. So character cakes are a lot trickier, but just quickly going back to point number one about building your portfolio, this is something super, super important to have. Nothing is more disappointing for a customer than asking for a character cake and then when you go to pick it up, it looks nothing like that character. Now for myself, I like it when character cakes look exactly like the character. I am huge on replication and making sure that it looks exactly like something. But a lot of cake artists I know are going to interpret characters instead. For myself, if I were to order Tangled Cookies, I would be looking for the actual Disney Tangled face. But I did an interpretation of Tangled. So yes, it did look like Rapunzel, a cutesy version, but some people don't like that. So it's really important that you nail down what your style of characters are. If you're going to opt for the cutesy version of a character, people are going to know, oh, this person likes to do a cutesy version of characters. You need to nail down how you are going to interpret characters on your cake. Are you gonna go for realism or are you gonna go for something else that you've interpreted? So those are five things there that I've learned in my time as an at-home baker to get right in order to drive your business. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of this sweetie fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!